Let's go through this just one real quick. I'll kind of go through this in a little bit quicker. It looks like everybody um, was signed. Everybody was able to get through it. So basically, ladies and gentlemen, one of the main keys when you're doing this, um, this is when we're doing the substitution method, one of the main things you always want to look for to applying the method that I'm showing you <coughs> is looking for when your variable is solved. Because when you have a variable that's solved, you know its value. right? It doesn't have to be just a single number. You know now the value. Oh. Y is equal to this. So therefore, I can plug this in, in for Y of my other equation. So I always think of substitution whenever I have a variable that's isolated by itself. So x plus 3 times 2x minus 9 equals 8. So all I basically did was took the value of Y from one equation, and I plugged it into the other equation. Um, now you do have to remember to apply your distributive property. Be careful with your math operations. And therefore, I have x. Um, plus 6x minus 9 equals 8. Now I'm just going to go ahead and solve. So I'll combine like terms, which becomes 7x. I'll add a 9 to both sides. And I get what? Dang it. You know and I said apply distributive property, and I didn't even follow behind a distributive property. Uh, so that's negative 27. Thank you. So I'll add 27 to both sides. 7x equals? 35. Now, to solve for x, I divide by 7. x equals 5. So now I know the value of 5. To find the value of y, I just go back up here and plug it in. y equals 1. All right. Let's